So yeah, thank you everyone and welcome to Tiven Talks, which is the show where we uncover the human behind the business. We have an exciting guest today, which I'll introduce in a minute, but I'm Sonia, CGO of Tiven, and there's a couple of things that I wanted to note before we start. Um, so this is supposed to be a very interactive chat. Uh, we're going to leave 10 minutes at the end for live questions, so make sure you put those in the, in the questions box. And then we'll answer them live with our guest. Um, but also make make sure to use the chat during uh, dur during the event. You can see now we already put some gifts in there. So you know it's not like me talking at you or our guests talking at you or us talking to each other. It should be very interactive. So hopefully we'll have fun as well. For anyone joining on YouTube or not live, uh, feel free to join the Tevent Talk space, which will probably be in the comments somewhere. And I think that's it. So I'm just going to introduce you to our guest uh, before he joins the stage. So he's not on the stage yet. And our guest is going to be Tango Meshki. He's a very young, uh, younger than me, a successful entrepreneur. He is currently head of growth. So he's a fellow growth person with me uh, at um, a tech startup called Pensite, backed by, I think, 3 million funding. That's quite good. Um, he did a stint at McKinsey, which we'll dive into a little bit more as well, because that's, that's you know, a topic close to my heart as I was a consultant as well. We go through shared trauma, things like that. Um, he also did a very successful stint at Bank of Georgia. So he is Georgian. Um, and I want to dive a bit more into his kind of like cultural background and how he immersed himself in there. And worth noting, he became deputy CIO there. So very, very impressive. Um, so we're going to touch upon a lot of topics with, with Tango and hopefully keep it very fun and uncover his, you know, human side under all these businesses. Um, and yeah, please react on top there. Yeah, I can see that. Let's go. Tango, do you want to join the stage? Hello. Here he is. So, uh, it, oh, I think yeah. one did an echo. Thank you. Can thank you first of all for the for the very kind intro. It was uh, probably too generous, but yeah, I'm happy to, happy to be here. Thanks again for the the invite. Awesome. Well, I was going to ask you if I did if I did yourself justice or if you wanted to add anything more, but it, it seems like I was okay. No, no, I wouldn't add in. I mean, I, yeah. We'll 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 deep dive into some of the topics, aren't we? So okay, so for new guests of Tavan Talks, we do something really fun, which is <laughs> oh no, Niall, there's something I missed about Tango. I'm scared. Um, <laughs> but there's something fun we do, which is the icebreaker. And I obviously usually uh, prepare the body questions with Tango beforehand, so we kind of know what we're going to talk about. Oops. Um, but the icebreaker, he doesn't know what it is. And I would like for this ice icebreaker to be accompanied by a little bit of a, a meme, you know, a visual. <laughs> so let me try to find it, if I have it. I do have it. So there's one thing that I haven't, um, I, I've left out in the intro, which is Tango has the title of Forbes 30 Under 30. And my icebreaker question to you is, when have you last used that? in a non-professional setting Ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay so i I'd, I'd like to say i've never personally used it i've had other people um successfully or somewhat help me out in uh, in a personal setting by uh extolling uh this this uh qualification of some sort um <laughs> niall the wingman as peter has rightly shared um is uh, he's a good friend of mine. He's a, he's, a, he's a great hype man to have by your side, and uh, he's he's been there once or twice um, in a yeah in a, in a non-professional setting. I think is probably the most appropriate way to describe it. So, so it's a very useful title to have then. I mean, it, it helps <laughs> in various situations. Yeah, I could I agree with that. Awesome. Well, obviously, I saw this meme <laughs> and I thought about you. But congrats. Well done. Um, <laughs> Before we, we kind of go into the questions, can you tell me a bit more on how you got it? Because I think that's really interesting. Yeah, uh, thanks. So um, 
essentially there's something that got in Georgia so Forbes Georgia were running the campaign as well uh, as well as the international campaign and um, I got to know the the editor and he basically recommended you know that this is something that I'd be you know, eligible for and uh, there was a recommendation letter required from someone senior and that was so my boss at the time uh, the CIO of the Bank of Georgia so uh, the CIO is a chief uh, in, uh, information officer uh, at the Bank of Georgia, not the chief investments officer. They're often also called CIOs, but the so the head of IT essentially, uh, all all of the tech unit, um, because I had a great relationship as well originally from my McKinsey project, and that's then why he hired me, and, and I was supporting him as the deputy. Um, we had a great connection, and he wrote the recommendation letter for me, and then you know, the rest okay. is history. Right. So it's like a very kind of recommendation based system. Yeah, I don't know. For if me yeah. As of March, so. <laughs> but otherwise, I would ask you to recommend me. Um, yeah. Are you very proud of the title, though? I mean, it's it's a, it's an interesting one because I mean, it's obviously great and it looks it looks cool and and all this kind of stuff. And I appreciate that symbols uh, are super important. Um, but it's interesting because it is just a symbol, right? I was I was the exact same person that I was the day after I got it as the day before. Like nothing had changed. Yeah. It's just some brand had said, you know, this guy is you know cool so it's interesting that there's still like a different way that people look at me and you know like the, and it's like a celebration of some sort but it's important to, to i think note that it's not you shouldn't oversteer or kind of like pay too much attention around those kind of things like of course it helps um and you know it's this great thing to like signal that you know there's some credibility um behind me but yeah, like I wouldn't have been like distraught if I didn't get it or anything like that. It was just a, a cool bonus. Awesome. Well, you know what? I'm just going to use that as a kind of perfect segue to talk a bit more about some aspects of um, your career. Talking about brands, I mean, you have huge ones. You're an engineer from Cambridge. You have McKinsey. Um, I mean, Bank of Georgia is, is also, you know, a symbol and it's very big and prestigious institution. And now Pennside, right, which is a startup, but being in a startup per se is already like a brand and, you know, you're kind of like cool and techie. So yeah. when, when we did the prep, um, there's some things that you, t something that you told me about picking up new skills and almost kind of engineering your career so that you become this really well-rounded person. So from being an engineer to now being head of growth, can you tell me like how you, you chose these things? Was it really like throwing yourself in the deep end, challenging yourself? Like what was the thought process there? Yeah, great question. So, so looking back at the decisions I've made, the, like the life decisions in terms of like degree and then jobs and so forth, really earlier on, I was definitely making all of my decisions, essentially optimizing for opening doors, you know? So like the idea is that I could go into anything after I did whatever that decision was. So again, the reason I did engineering instead of maths, which was an option was because engineering left me open to many other things, whereas maths is kind of like academia, like quants and other stuff, but quite specialized down that route. So that as well, consulting essentially uh, as a as a, an industry and a place to go again, similar kind of thing, like it increases your employability, you know, as brand recognition, all that kind uh, of stuff to your CV. And it lets you go into literally any industry after consulting, right? So you could go from pharma to like third sector to, you know, anything. So yeah. that's what I was optimizing for earlier on. Then there were certain reasons why I chose the Bank of Georgia. So um, you're right in terms of like, it, funnily enough, like it's almost like the, the brand level internationally has yeah. decreased in terms of like, you know, I mean, Cambridge and McKinsey both high up, but then you know, Bank of Georgia definitely internationally isn't like globally known. In Georgia, it's, it's a very strong brand. But yeah, and then kind of what I was doing there was like once I've created like this symbols, like signals of, you know, I'm a trustworthy guy, then, you know, I can explore more, like more specifically the kind of different roles I was interested in. And more specifically for the Bank of Georgia, there were three elements really at play there. Uh, one is professionally, it was, a, it was a, an interesting move because it was a management position. And um, yeah, I wanted yeah. to get that experience, you know, working, having teams and uh, working with other people. And, you know, I, it's, you know, I see, D suite kind of minus one. Of course, I got a really good uh, exposure to like really strong executives yeah. making important decisions for a company that has a huge influence in Georgia, um, in you know, in one of the biggest uh, uh, 
uh, Caucasian countries. So that was that was really cool. The second uh, element was family as well. So I wanted to be close to my family. My grandma was not well at the time, so I wanted to spend time close to her. And I'm really glad I did that. And then the third element was the cultural Georgia aspect of it. So yeah. um, I grew up in the UK. I was born in Manchester and raised in Manchester and, and then spent my time in the UK. But we'd go back for every summer to see family. Everybody else apart from the, the nuclear unit uh, was in Georgia. So we went yeah. back um, uh, for a couple of weeks every now and then. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to experience what the first like economically yeah. professionally what life was like and get closer to my roots in terms of like culture, language, history, people, all that kind of stuff. And so uh, I immersed myself in, in, in that. So that's why I chose Bank of Georgia. And then during my time at, uh, at the Bank of Georgia, I realized that two main things that I wanted to be closer to products. So I was working on processes and like operations kind of stuff uh, when I was there. And I realized I wanted to be closer to either building or distributing product. Yeah, whole time Manchester. Um, and yeah, so I was build, I wanted to be building or uh, distributing product. And I also realized I wanted to be in like a smaller team because uh, in large corporations, you still feel that there's only so much ownership you get. And so this ownership element was super important for me. And that's why I wanted to be in a startup. So uh, I was exploring different angles and then Pensite came up. I, I really lo love the mission to kind of democratize education, to help independent experts yep. share and make money and all that kind of stuff so i think this is like a huge move towards the creator kind of community um kind of structure that the internet web 2 and now web 3 is uh, is facilitating it was super interesting yeah. so uh, it's a completely new wow. challenge to get growth here that that's such a like broad can of worms and like i'm not even sure we should do another <laughs> podcast on like nfts and web, web 3.0 but Definitely. um so i love uh, thank you how you actually talk about optimizing for so you can still see this like kind of trait of an engineer in you you're like i'm optimizing for you know um i there's so many things i want to ask you but like i think this is a nice segue as well into kind of like your personal ambitions for the future um what are you actually ultimately optimizing for where do you see yourself and i think the other question that we can treat with that at the same time and i found that really fascinating is you said you believed in digital transformation for good um so yeah i believe that these two are kind of you know yeah working well together. yeah uh, so what am i optimizing for and more about digital transformations yeah so what am i optimizing for kind of longer like kind of looking at life like philosophically almost um <laughs> nice. the, the millenn it. millennial answer is true for me like i want impact um like i want to have as much positive positive impact on the world as possible i also have a slightly parochial view in the sense that i'd like to have as much impact as well on georgia specifically yeah. and then like a lot on georgia ideally and then like also on the on the broader global stage would be the dream um i i do believe that tech startups and um essentially technology is the is the best way to do that on a scalable way uh, which is i mean partially like you know super trendy and fashionable now of course you know elon yeah. and stuff everyone Everyone loves tech startups now, but I think I was I was early on the bandwagon, um, and I, I do really believe in it. Um, although I'm aware, I'm slightly more disillusioned than I was. Um, you know, I'm aware that there's a lot of you know overhype about certain areas, and I'm sure like many things will fail. But I think overall, it's like, definitely like growth. <laughs> is is growth over over hype? No, no, no. <laughs> not because, um, I mean stuff like, for example, like. ICOs, right? So they were like a part of crypto, which was overhyped and like many people lost right. money. That's the kind of stuff I mean, like- So you mean the very... kind of business remit, the, the, the business ideas that seem very disruptive, but really are a bit, yeah. you know- And also like where... some elements of a, like, you know, like I, I it's definitely like a massive ego competition uh, between like yeah. Jeff and Elon, right? And stuff like that, oh, which okay. is like, okay, cool. But like, is that really the best use of your money and time? I don't know. But, but again, oh. that's, that's another massive conversation in its own right. So I, I, let's not go down that route. Um, so yeah, so different impact, like as much as possible. Um, that's what I'm optimizing for in like Georgia is an important element of that. And I think so in the longer term, I definitely like to have my own startup. So that's essentially, I'm building my skill set and network to, to try to make that thing in the, in the future, in the mid, mid term kind of future. And the other question was about, I've already forgotten. Um, digital transformation for good, digital what are you optimizing yeah. for? So I think you've answered both to be honest. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I mentioned the technology aspect is key. And so that digital transformation angle has been a thread throughout, you know, engineering. I was at McKinsey Digital specifically, Bank right. of Georgia IT and here. Mm, any huge traumas or, um, you know, 
<laughs> bad experiences yeah. from your time at McKinsey? Do you have an example? So I don't know if you know the page consulting humor or uh, yeah, right? consulting so, Is there anything like that, like a please fix moment that came? Yeah, I'd say I definitely had an overall a good good experience. Uh, definitely a great learning experience, and I'm, I'm very happy. I don't regret it, or I definitely wouldn't change anything. There were, of course, moments um, like you know, three a.m.s which I didn't enjoy, and moments yeah, there. <laughs> looking back, which you know, I've, I, 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 like, I try to approach everything as a learning experience anyway. So, like, even the things that didn't go yeah. well, like, what could I have done? Like, is there anything I could have done and try to fix things in the future? I mean. You, yeah. You've got to try how much it works out is you know, dependent. I think, I think that's a really good approach. So uh, related to that is being ahead of growth. And I really want to delve into the whole like, growth kind of debate. What is growth? Is it different to marketing and high marketing team? Yes, we're going to treat that question. Um, By but... the way, can I ask you these questions as oh, well? <laughs> what? No, this is not what supposed to be. Um, yeah, why, why don't you go ahead? I was going to ask whether being your own boss, you know, as, as head of department, um, I think my role is fairly similar. Um, is that Does that make it easier um, than, for example, being in a consulting role as, a, as an associated consultant or like a manager? Because like you're under pressure. So, and yes, and then feel free to ask questions. I'd love that. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, so, what was the specific question about growth? Because there's also another question I've seen in the in the questions from Prasanna. What excites you about growth as opposed to other business functions? So I can Ooh, answer. Yeah, we, we can go with that one. Cool. Yeah. So, thanks, Prasanna, for the question. Um, I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, so, yeah, regarding growth, I think it's first of all, it's exciting because it's uh, a growing area in terms of business, uh, industry-wise, and in tech startups specifically. Um, what I think I specifically appeals to me is the fact that it's it touches like almost every area of the business. So um, I mean, by large part, it's marketing, um, or like traditionally it would be considered marketing. But I think that's one element of it, and it's super important that the marketing, first of all, kind of is related to the brand. So you have to have the brand strategy right, which also comes from the segmentation. So marketing isn't just purely like, you know, posting things on Facebook or content marketing, all that kind of stuff. It's also deeply understanding the customer you're aiming for, which related to the kind of the brand side of things, the market research as well as user research, collecting all of that kind of stuff, Mark, validating the idea, validating the market, validating the product. You have to deal with both product risk, you have to deal with market risk. Then you have, that has to tie into the product strategy and the product vision, uh, and you have to kind of work with the engineers to actually figure out what's the right feature to develop next, because there's also complications yeah. with the dependencies, uh, and all the way down to like the finances, like is the unit economics correct? Are you analyzing the business correctly? There's so many things to consider, um, and yeah. it kind of gives you like again, like because I try to take things in a kind of polymathic approach. It's it, uh, I kind of like this kind of like synthetic combining lots of dots. Uh, approach to kind of thinking in general and uh, and like that those kind of challenges excite me so that's what excites me about growth um, anything anything you'd answer Son, Sonia yeah um, did you just call me Sonj that's I would call you Sonj I'm not sure what that is not sure what that is I'm going to call you Sonja no it works it works it works um, <laughs> growth what so, okay, so for me, there's a difference between head of growth and chief growth officer, which is fairly a fairly new title out there, but it's coming. It's coming big. Um, it's kind of, you know, the, it's very similar to a CEO, but a bit less operational because you're just looking at business growth. And it's obviously such a broad field that there's different levers and buckets. So I've tried to segment that really um, nicely for our practice, but the metrics you're looking at, you need to define them really clearly because that will vary by business by business now. I think generally, traditionally, that might not be the case with you, but head of growth, um, they tend to be more like growth marketers. So they tend to do the typical like growth hacking, the AB exper uh, experiments, very focused on digital marketing. What I like about my role, and I think that the title of chief then reflects is the strategic element that's added to it. As you said, um, is the product kind of adapted to our segment, product market fit? You know what I mean? So that element to me is really important. And I come from a very strategic background. Um, and, and frankly, I'm good at it, perhaps better than at execution. So so for me, this is the part that, that really excites me. Um, the, 
the the kind of like a b testing and stuff is is really cool is fun is is good to manage but i think some of the growth marketers are a little bit too stuck on that you know they they just kind of like do that and it's like oh my god they're like 20 percent of our like yeah it's great but is that scalable is that is that going to last you know next quarter is it just like this small thing and I think then there's also new theories that come up, frameworks, product-led growth was like my favorite as probably everyone in the team like heard me talk about it a million times. Love product-led growth, love Sean Ellis. And I think in general, it's it's such an innovative field. And I agree with you, I like that it's very multidisciplinary. So between product strategy, marketing um, and sales, so like we're doing a lot of sales at the moment. I mean, you know, yeah. but again, then sales is part of, of consulting a lot. You do a lot of biz dev, all that in a different way, but. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and there's a follow-up question about the difference between marketing and growth. Do you wanna have a crack at that first or should I? Oh, you're putting me in dangerous territory. I haven't got the marketing team listening to me. I think you should go <laughs> and then you'll supplement. Okay, well, I mean, I don't wanna cause any rift. <laughs> okay. We've discussed it expense. But uh, yeah, for me, it's kind of like a, a Venn diagram with like quite a large overlap in the two. Um, you came then, prepared. You came prepared. You're a true consultant, like Ben yeah. Grant. <laughs> yeah, um, I think there's a large overlap between the two. Um, I think so. I think. I mean, these are all labels, so I, I don't really like. I don't think it makes too much sense to spend too much time on semantics. Really, uh, I think it's clear. It's good to have like these responsibilities set out between the teams, but for me, growth is. Uh, contains a fair bit of marketing. It's, it's a lot of experimentation when it comes to growth, uh, to marketing. I think so. Marketing mm -hmm. does more of like the creative side of things, which is super important in terms of like like creating graphics and and copy and all that kind of stuff uh, for the online material or uh, could be offline, I guess, uh, for all the essentially like awareness building stuff. So like think, looking at the funnel, I think marketing should be very focused on the awareness element. Yeah. Um, whereas I think I growth is thinking like all the way throughout the funnel, how can we increase the conversion ratio all the way down? And so marketing is one element of that. They can run growth experiments on say like landing pages and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's kind of more of a holistic view and also ties in, I think a little bit more with the product. Of course, you can't really do marketing okay. without a deep understanding of the product. Okay. But for, for me, growth is a bit more intimately tied with, you know, what direction the product should go. Yeah. I totally agree with you. I think like the classic explanation is definitely what you said, like marketing is, is there a funny question? Yeah, no, Mel, Mel, Mel posted a funny comment. They go to the like labels. I am going to deep dive into that. No, um, <laughs> I think um, you're right. The classic explanation is marketing is the two A's. So like awareness activation and persona. I don't know if he's, yeah, he's probably like cringing. <laughs> But um, it, what I like about working with Prasanna as the CMO is that we almost see it, see it like as, as a kind of like distribution of tasks of a broader thing because marketing is such a broad word like it can be digital marketing like brand is part of marketing like some people see it like that and you could see growth as the circle and then marketing is within it there's different ways of seeing it at the end of the day is a set of tasks as a set of KPIs and yep. we split those um, to achieve the best results. But yeah, it is quite a quite a debate at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so Tango, why don't why don't you like labels? To, to tell us more about that. I think there's some more questions we should answer first. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Great. Do you want to pick one? Um, so the mustache is not a stick on. It's something I'm experimenting <laughs> with. Thanks, Niall, for the important question. Um, these get locks are northern quarters. So to be completely honest with you, I've not been to Manchester properly in a while. Uh, I like gone out. So back in my day, um, it was Dean's Gate Locks, but I've, you know, I've heard NQs popping off and I think there's some more areas that have been regenerated quite nicely. So I think I need to properly visit again. I'm also a big fan of Wimmy Road, of course. It's a, it's a hub for the boys and, and girls. I have no idea what you're talking about. The, the, man, the Manx will, so that's what matters. Um, cool. And then some questions from Niall again. Let's, let's um, see what we got. Let's see what we got. Um, I think I quite like the one from Niall. Anything about Tango's journey that was unexpected and changed his trajectory, positive or negative? Ooh, good wow. question. It's another juicy one. Um, so yeah, I mean, the Georgia move was actually pretty unexpected. I definitely was not planning like okay. in my teens to move back, um, and that definitely changed my trajectory quite quite dramatically. Um, 
because there are many different paths that people go, especially for like two years into McKinsey. Some people stay, a lot of people leave, mm. and then a lot of people come back as well after that. Yeah. So like I was originally looking into doing MBAs, which is like the more stereotypical path, two years McKinsey, MBA, go back two years at McKinsey, and then go off and do other stuff or stay long term. So that's what a lot of people do. And then I was considering it, doing having to do the GMAT massively, GMAT, BMAT, whatever it's called, that massively put, like, put me off even just like, I just couldn't be bothered to do MBA applications because of that. So, um, uh, the GMAT, is it the GMAT? The GMAT, yeah. Oh, oh it's and, terrible, isn't it? Like, you, you need to study a year just for that. Like, yeah. And then there's like essays you have to write and all this kind of stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, no. So, um, uh, and then like, soon, yeah, soon after that, Corona happened as well. And I'm, I, I just, I just feel incredibly sorry for any students who have to study at university during Corona because I just feel like, yeah, a massive, massive part of the university experience was lost. So definitely no, no appeal to me there and in terms of studying at Corona. So yeah, now I feel too old, um, which uh, is probably unfair because... Um, that is yeah. unfair on me. I'm <laughs> that. I don't know if you're planning to do an MBA, but I've heard that the average yeah. age is now like 26, 27, which I was shocked. My dad has done an MBA at the University of St. Gallen at the age of 50 and came top of his class whilst running his business. So nothing is impossible. That's pretty no, good. I think I mean, I think you're actually too young for an MBA, to be honest. Too young for it. Okay, maybe I don't know. Maybe yeah. I mean, like thinking about the the factors to again optimization wise, I don't think it makes sense for me currently. It's something I I yeah. consider further further on, uh, further on down the line. Um, they they might be a bit outdated. I feel like it's like it's such an old school thing. Like kind of you go to Stanford, Harvard Business, and then you end up in PE or in consulting, but the route we're taking is maybe a little bit different, so maybe the old means don't, you know, get us there. I mean, that's what I'm starting to think. Yeah. An interesting question about the negative stuff as well. I mean, yeah. it's another massive conversation, but I feel like my teenage years, I, I very detrimentally uh, affected my my trajectory. But again, that's that's another like massive. And also, like, quite psychologically traumatic uh, discussion to have. So let's let's skip over. Okay. That. Wow. <laughs> well, that, that that concludes it on a positive note, doesn't it? So we have two minutes left on this stage. I will ask you a bit more of a jolly question, just because I find it interesting. And then for anyone, I see new people joining here actually, which is pretty cool. Um, we have a discussion room where we can hang out for a little bit. You guys can turn your cameras on and actually speak to Tango as well, or myself, or anyone in the room really. And we can send fun gifts and and continue this and maybe poke into um, Tango's traumatic um, uh, teenage years. But Tango, what is your tea regime and why do you have one? My tea regime. So, so this is absolutely critical as a as a British Georgian <laughs> to have a very well laid out tea regime. So in the mornings, it's got to be a green tea. If you're Are feeling, you yeah, of course, always. Uh, if you feel you know, if you want to spice it up, jasmine, top choice. Um, it's available. Green tea, jasmine, fantastic. And then, if you, in the early afternoon, if you're, you know, ready to mix it up, then an Earl Grey can can really hit the spot. Otherwise, green tea all the way through. Again, optional berry um, if you want something fruity. And oh. then in the evening from 7 p.m. onwards, it's got to be chamomile. Chamomile. I'm a big fan of the chamomile. Okay, so you repeat that every day. I mean, I don't have teas at these times always, but if like it's basically my time slotted allowance. Quote, no, I mean, it's not. I'm not that anal. Don't worry. <laughs> I just you cut off. I don't know if you've cut off for everyone else, but it just ended with "I'm not that anal," which is perfect. So, <laughs> <laughs> that was it. So um, thank you. It was such a pleasure talking to you. I hope we can do this again and like maybe deep dive on some things. Um, but yeah, should we move to the discussion room and kind of get everyone involved? I'm sure Niall will, will crack a few jokes there as well. Um, so anyone who wants to hang out with us for a little bit, meet us in the discussion room. Just use the back button on top, top left. And thank you so much. Looking forward to it.